So look who we've managed to find, everybody. We've got the little Princess Shongile. Isn't that amazing? And she's in the most beautiful light. She's striding into this western horizon and this golden light is just going into her and onto those beautiful little eyes. My girl, what are you doing all by yourself and where's your brother and your mother? We've been missing you guys. And aren't they just spectacular? Isn't that a sight to behold now? It's been weeks since we've seen any of them and this is really so good to see her. I'm so ecstatic that she's come out to see us and especially because we found her before Brent came back. Now I know we haven't found Karula but maybe Karula will be around as well and we'll be able to see her too. And look at her putting up her tail. She's getting cross with the little drongo that's shouting at her and she's putting up that little white flag to say don't shout at me please. I'm just a little cat. I don't want to cause any trouble. Leave me alone. And off she goes again. Isn't she spectacular? She's still very small, so I'm surprised that Karula's not spending that much time with her anymore. I would have thought that Karula would have still been with her quite a lot. And I know the guys in the south have told me that they really haven't seen too much of Karula um, as much as we haven't, so I don't know where she is at the moment. I'm sure she's around. I don't think that she's going to have disappeared anywhere, but... Now, I believe all of you are ecstatic that you're getting to see Shongila, and so am I. Isn't that spectacular? Look at that light coming down onto that beautiful little leopard. Isn't that amazing? It's almost picture perfect of this tiny little leopard cub walking into that afternoon light. Absolutely incredible. And you can hear the birds are following her, and so the tail is up, and she's busy sort of showing everybody that I'm not to be shouted at. Please leave me alone. I just want to walk along and try and see if I can find my brother and my mother before she carries on. Now we're right on the southern boundary so I'm hoping that she's not going to go south again and that she's actually going to come onto our side and we'll be able to see her. And I wonder if she wasn't pushed onto the road by the baboons. So earlier I was saying there was baboons and the baboons came from where she came out and so maybe she saw the baboons and got a bit nervous and that's why she came out towards us. So I'm going to just try and catch up with her because she's you know, drifted quite far away from us. But isn't this exciting? Absolutely amazing. She's such a cool little cat and she's so beautiful and her eyes in this late afternoon light is just absolutely incredible. It's almost a dream picture of her just walking down this road. So really, really happy that we got to find her and to see her. Now hopefully little Hosanna won't be too far behind and we'll be able to find him as well and he'll be come out of the woodwork and then shortly followed by Karula. So that's going to be the hope with all of this. And look, she's going towards the north. Now let's see if she's going to go up there. There is a road coming up called Weaver's Nest and it's a road that she does like to walk so I'm hoping that she might go up onto that road. And the reason why I'm hoping is because it means we'll have her all to ourselves, which I know is naughty, but it is nice to spend time with a leopard all by yourself and be able to watch her. And look at how she's got that rim light on her. Isn't that spectacular? So, Brian, you're asking, is she limping on her back right leg? I didn't notice it. Um, I will have a look now and just make sure and see, but I didn't notice it, to be honest. It looks like she was just walking around normally as she normally does. So hopefully she'll start walking again now and I'll be able to just check that for you, Brian. But I didn't notice it. I'm so excited to see her. But to be honest, I didn't really pay attention. I was too busy looking at her beautiful eyes that she has. So hopefully she'll be able to walk for us and we can just make sure. But I don't think so. She looks all right. She looks healthy. I mean, she could do with a, a big meal, but she still looks good. She's not like she's lost massive amounts of weight. So whatever she's been up to and wherever they've been, they've been managing to find food really quite efficiently. So she's just fine. And isn't that pretty? Look at that beautiful coat. Those gold colors, like I say, with that backlight. And hopefully she's going to look over her shoulder at us and it really will be quite spectacular. Isn't that amazing? Now I'm going to just try and just get a little bit closer. She's just stopped there for a second, so let's see if we can just maybe... Now there are some guests that have joined us, and so they're taking photos. So what I'm trying to do is just try to get out of their photo a little bit, because otherwise I'm going to be in the background. So it's quite nice, and also for us, it means that I can have them out of our picture too, which is really good. So there we go, she's now sitting. Hello, my girl. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely amazing. So while it's still not a proper leopard drought broken, 
for the Royals, it at least is one of them, and she's providing us with a beautiful sighting of her sitting out in the open and walking around in this gorgeous afternoon light. Now, for those of you that are happy to see her and are just generally really glad that she's back and around and have taken some amazing screenshots, it would be great if you send us through some on hashtag Safari Live. And, and for the new viewers that are not sure who the royal family is and who I'm even talking about, if you've got any questions, it would also be great to hear from you. So hashtag Safari Live, and we'll try and answer as many questions as we can. And like I say, the royal family, for those of you who don't know, is a leopardess that has been in this area for 13 years she's probably one of the most successful leopards that i've ever had the privilege of spending time around she's raised multiple litters to adulthood and has really been one of the most successful mothers they could be and this is one of her current cubs her little name is Shongile, and she is the female of the cubs and there is a male called Hosanna and so he's also around and we haven't seen any of them for about three weeks now maybe just under three weeks and so it's been really quite a privilege to be able to spend time with them again and see them are you going to lie down there? has it all been too much for you my girl? So Cedar Point, you're asking whether she's old enough to hunt by herself. Well, indeed, she, she probably can. Um, I know that she's been seen with a w monitor kill before. So she'll be hunting smaller things. So she's not going to be able to hunt big things like an adult impala. She's still too little for that. But what she can hunt is birds, small mice, um, monitor lizards, other smaller lizards. So she'll be able to sustain herself by finding those food items. And as she gets older and stronger, so then she'll start to be able to find the food that she needs and get big enough to pull down things as large as a big adult impala. But that's still a while away for her. I'm sure in maybe another year's time she'll be big enough to then start approaching that subject. But for now, it's going to be birds, little steenbok like we saw at the start of the drive. That would be something that she'd be able to go after. Baby diker, baby impalas, and then small lizards frogs rodents so leopard has a really really varied diet now i do apologize for that slight heat haze over her face it's from the bonnet of the car and the angle that we're at unfortunately you get a little bit of it but it's not too bad now there we go well done craig but isn't she beautiful look at those eyes she's got the most golden colored eyes it's absolutely spectacular such a pretty leopard. She's going to be so beautiful when she's older. And it looks like she's going to follow in the footsteps of a lot of her mom's previous litters. So her mom's first litter, which was Shadow and Tundi. Or Shadow was also known as Tingana back in the day. But those two were very small little females. And even when they got older and much sort of adult females, they remained quite small. And I think Shungila is going to be very similar. She's going to be a little girl. She's not going to grow too large, but generally with Karula's cubs, even though they're so small, they pack a punch. They generally have a little aggressive side to them that allows them to box way above their weight category, and they're still not shy of going after big animals. So I've seen Tundi, who was the first litter, when she was only about three and a half years old, she managed to kill a fully grown female kudu, like what we were seeing earlier, which is absolutely amazing. And so I'm sure Shungila is going to follow in those footsteps. Now Hosanna, on the other hand, is a brute already. He's quite big, and if we see, hopefully if he comes out and we see the two of them together, you'll see that he's almost double her size, even though they're the same age. So he's got that sort of genes that Tingana's got, and we think Tingana is the, the male that produced these cubs, and he's got those big, bulky sort of shoulders and paw areas, and is absolutely massive. But isn't that just so elegant, her just lying in the middle of the road like that? Absolutely wonderful. Look at that, she's almost going to sleep now. Now I wonder what she's going to be able or what she's going to get up from here, whether she's going to go north or south. So Ellen, this is an interesting question. You're wondering if Karula is possibly spending time in other parts of her territory so as to make space for Shongile when Shongile becomes an adult. Well, I suppose it's possible. 
but generally Juma has always been the center of Kruler's territories. The one area that she's never given up. Now you must remember she's had multiple females. So she's had Tandi, she's had Shadow, she's had Shivinzi. And so if, through all of those females, she hasn't once given up the Juma area or the Vuatela area. And so I don't think so. I don't think that she would want to give it up. She knows that there's very good den sites for her there. There's availability of food and water. and at end of the day it's the heart of her territory generally when females give up an area for their young females they normally give a fringe territory to them and then they have to find their own way so what I think is happening is that she's taking her into little Gari and she's showing her little Gari and I think that she wants to leave her in little Gari and maybe southwards and that's where she's going to be and then Karula is going to come back into Vuyatela and Juma. The reason why I think we haven't seen Karula is twofold. One is that when they went south we then had very heavy rains came in after that and the heavy rains would have meant that with the bush got a lot thicker and it was a lot easier for her to hunt and she would have made multiple kills very quickly and so in the southern part they would have been feeding a lot in that area and she would have found the food that she's needed and therefore she's taken the cubs to that food and they've stayed in that area for long periods of time. The second reason is that I think that she's starting to get to that point where she's looking around and, and knows that she's going to be leaving her cubs fairly shortly they are 13 months old and a leopard female generally leaves her cubs from between 14 months and two years and so i think she's prepping for that and maybe just maybe she's coming into an easter cycle and that's why she's starting to move into different areas and i've seen with karula that when she goes into easter cycles she'll go into completely um in completely different areas way outside of her territory to go in search of males and she checks for all the males that are around here so i wouldn't be surprised if we see her rock up somewhere with anderson in the far west or even quarantine which i know is her son but it would be possible in the far east it does happen um, but theoretically tingana should still be the male that covers her but sometimes what she'll do is just go on those fringes just to make sure that in case tingana something happens to him that a younger male that might come in like anderson or quarantine they might come in and take over that he she's made with them and that they think that those are her cubs so that's why she'll do it she's did it before when Tangana was the dominant male all the way at Simomili and spent no time in this area we found her all the way that side mating with him just to make sure that she covered the all bases and to make sure that the cubs when they were um, produced were protected from any threat that could come from males in the surrounding area Right, so we're going to sit with little Shongile and see what she gets up to. Hopefully she's going to get up and start moving again. But while she takes a little nap, let's go across to Byron and see what he's up to with his big, large, grey elephants. <laughs> 